talk to Tom Deanhart to zone in on this Purdue versus Nebraska matchup. Tom Deanhart from Golden Black, yeah. the authority of Purdue football, longtime Big Ten expert as well. Tom, we're looking forward to coming to your town, baby. Yes, uh, West Lafayette is embracing for the invasion of Sean Callahan and Steve Sipple and the Big Red Nation. Man, we're, we're we got everything bolted down, we're ready to go. We're going to roll out the red carpet, guys. Okay, you know, you know, I love you guys. Always good to see you. Always excited when you're rolling into town here. Sounds like you're going to have a mighty fine meal. Yeah, don't get the don't get the the chicken. Don't get the fish. You guys got to go for the the market price. You know, lobster, surf and turf. And, uh, you know, Sean's, Sean's paying, didn't he, Steve? Yeah, I'm well, getting this one. Oh, okay. Well, that changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm even, I'm looking forward to the, You know, Tom, there's a steak and shake right across the street that I was mm. actually considering. That's more my speed. That's your kind of steakhouse. <laughs> That's your kind of steakhouse. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk ball as. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. But, Tom, as, as we get into this game, give us a temperature check on this Purdue Boilermaker team. <laughs> You guys played at Oregon State, didn't get back to West Lafayette till 6.30 in the morning on wow. Sunday. Wow. Another tough loss after the Notre Dame one a couple of weeks before that. What is your read on this team heading into this crucial game against Nebraska? A temperature check. Yes. Uh, it's probably a rectal thermometer for Purdue, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's been tough, you know. Uh, I mean, our, our message boards are ablaze. Uh, People are wondering, what is going on? Uh, the Notre Dame game left everybody aghast, guys. 66 to 7. You talk about stupefying. There's no other way to, to describe what happened that Saturday afternoon. So much was on the line for Purdue. A great chance to make a statement about where the program was at. Of course, not only didn't they win, they got clobbered. And, and you know what's even worst of all? It looks like they, they weren't even competitive. The game looked like it was over in the first quarter. And I'm going to say this, too, fellas. As bad as that was last weekend at Oregon State, 38-21 was probably worse. The score wasn't as bad, but we all were waiting for a response, right? How was Purdue going to respond? Were they going to get things buttoned up? Were, were, were details going to be taken care of? Were they going to be more competitive? And honestly, they really didn't look that much better. Against an Oregon State team, guys, that was gutted by the portal last year, that's head coach, its alum, its famous quarterback, ditched it for Michigan State. And that team pretty much ran Purdue off the field, too. So I don't know what to tell you what's going to happen Saturday. Northern Nebraska's favored by nine points. I, I have no idea what Purdue team's going to come out. But, guys, uh, it's, it's, it's condition critical. DEFCON 5. Uh, it's, 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 it's just uh, an inferno right here in West Lafayette yeah, trying to figure things out. And they, they got to get something figured out over there and get this team back on track. Tom Deanhart. Tom Deanhart has been covering, covering sports for – decades tom where's the where's the disconnect can you is it i know that's a hard question ryan walters is in his second year as Purdue's yeah. head coach i thought right away it was a questionable hire because of his lack of experience as a head coach no experience as a head coach but where is this disconnect what's happened yeah you know it's funny um maybe there's an indictment on me but when we were doing that coaching search after brahm left you know, we all put our hot boards together right uh-huh he was never even on our hot board. Um, I had one person tell me that they had talked to him. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't know the degree of the, the depth of that, but uh, I was surprised, like everybody, that he was the choice. I don't think this is a job you, you can learn on uh, in the Big Ten or at Purdue especially. A defensive head coach, too, the guy from the defensive side of the ball at Purdue. Uh, we have to be innovative, and that's the cradle of quarterbacks, if you will. And uh, – I think I think Ryan's smart. Maybe one day he will be a good head coach, and maybe he'll turn this around, guys. Maybe he will. I, I think one of the issues, I kind of wonder how good the staff is overall, too. Um, still, it's a very young staff. There's not one guy on it that's ever been a head coach. And if it was me, I would have hired some old war horse guy who was a head coach to be my right hand. I'd want that guy in the booth or right next to me on game days to help walk me through things, scenarios, how to run a team, how to deal with adversity. <laughs> None, none, none of that's here right now. So, um, and again, just um, the, the offense has been the bigger, bigger disappointment of, of, of all, even more so than the defense, guys. I thought the offense was going to be the strength of the team this year, and it has not been. There, there's really no innovation. There's no counterpunch. And, uh, 
And, and we, we've seen we've seen Hudson Card sort of struggle and, and, and regress a little bit too. If Purdue beats Nebraska, what is their recipe to doing it? From you've watched the corner, <laughs> you got to watch the game on Friday, so you got a feel for Nebraska too. Obviously, a great feel for Purdue. How do you think the Boilermakers attack the Huskers? I think they've got to offensively get get that run going. You know, uh, they have been able to run the ball uh, pretty well. Again, they, they really had their success against Indiana State and Oregon State. But still, they, they, even going back to last year, guys, the last three games of the year, they averaged close to 280 yards rushing a game, I think. So Devin Mockaby's good. Reggie Love from Illinois is a good back. They got a, Their line's better, I think. It's bigger. It's more physical. It's deeper. They can get a push there. So if they can run and act like Illinois did, keep the ball away from Nebraska. Sean and I talked this week, too, about the ball control Illinois had. They wore down the Illinois defense. Purdue's going to have to be able to do that. If they can do that, maybe that sets up some passes for, for Hudson Card. And, and one other thing, guys, they've got to do better on third down. I think they're the worst team in the Big Ten on third down conversion. And defensively, guys, they're one of two teams in America without a takeaway this year. That's got to change if they want to win Saturday. And they've got to learn how to set the edge. Teams are running wild on Purdue. Mm. Uh, the last two opponents have ran for over 300 yards. That's got to make Nebraska salivate. That's got to make Matt Rule smile like a Cheshire cat. So, man, I tell you what, you look at those sidelines, and you guys are going to have a big schematic advantage from a coaching staff standpoint. And Matt Rule's a smart guy, and I, I kind of wonder what he's going to come up with. I wonder what he's seeing on film watching this Purdue team. Well, one thing he's seeing is number four um, on, on Purdue's defense. Mm -hmm. And that that's enough to get Nebraska's attention. That's Kydron Jenkins. Is yeah, that how you yeah. his first name? He had four and a half tackles for loss against Nebraska last year. One game, four and a half tackles for loss. Sean thought he was one of the better players he, he saw. I would say the same thing. What do you anticipate? I mean, what do you anticipate from him? He had, he had a touchdown last year against you guys, too. He yes, he a, did. It's got like a scoop on a score. You know, he's an inside linebacker now. Oh, and some people kind of are, think that's a dubious decision that was made by the staff. They took him off the edge, made him inside linebacker. He, he was up for because the thinking is if he's going to play in the NFL, he's six, he's six foot one, 260 pounds. He's not going to be a defensive end in the NFL. If he's going to play at that level, it's going to have to be on two feet as a linebacker. So he, he, he was okay with it. He's been solid, guys. I, I don't think he's got the speed to be an inside linebacker, to run sideline to sideline. Uh, if the game's in the box, he's good. He, check, he checks everything you want in a football player. I mean, he's the ultimate warrior. Um, but I think this, 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 this maybe this Saturday, guys, maybe you will see him on the edge a little bit more. Okay. Um, I think there's been some attrition up front at rush end. I think they know what they're missing in Jenkins not being off the edge. You guys saw it last year on Lincoln. He's a special player off the edge. So maybe we'll see number four or maybe more at rush end. Yanni Karloff just being the number one inside linebacker then. Of course, George Karloff is his younger brother. Okay. So you're right, guys. He's special. But this is the defense has had a lot of sloppy tackling. And another guy, well, Jenkins has been pretty good this year, guys. Number 31, Dylan Thieneman, the freshman All-American last year, has really struggled. He's looked bad, bad angles, missed a lot of tackles. Tom, um, I'm curious. Nebraska's got a great freshman, obviously, Dylan Riola. We know mm -hmm. all about him here. What, what's been the chatter about Nebraska's freshman quarterback out in West Lafayette this week? Yeah, very impressed. We talked to Ryan Walters and Kevin Kane, the defensive coordinator, uh, Boy, you, we, we've heard about Rayola for a couple of years, and and he looks like he's going to live up to the hype, right? You got you guys have somebody very special there, and uh, boy, the the ability to throw deep with accuracy, um, and also the the calm, you know, uh, for for a guy so young to have that type of presence and not not to be flummoxed and to maintain your cool and your calm, um, that's that's maybe the most impressive thing at all. Uh, I think, despite all that, guys. Purdue's defense is going to come after him. I think you have to come after him. That, that's the MO of this defense. They're, they're going to take chances, high risk, high reward. Okay. They're going to blitz. They're going to leave their corners in man coverage a lot, a lot, and come after this guy. They do it with about everybody. So especially a freshman quarterback. I think I think they 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 first of all they got to, they got to commit to stopping the run, right? And then okay. try to get after Rayola. And, and again, like I said, try to get their first takeaway of the year for crying out loud. Risky. I mean, that's, that, that's risky. Yes, now, what risky. I wonder, too, the game I've seen is listed as a sellout. What yeah, kind of scene do you expect there, Tom? 
it's homecoming. So it's a typical homecoming. Uh, I bet there'll be a lot of red in the stands, though, guys. My, my, my feeling is I bet a lot of fans are, have sold their tickets, uh, even though it is homecoming. And I think, like I said, we'll see a decent amount of red. Um, Purdue's had good crowds the last two years, despite being four and eight last year and one and two this year. Uh, they're going to have, they're going to, they got Oregon on a Friday night. That's probably going to sell out. Mm -hmm. The Northwestern game is supposed to be close to sell out. And they got Penn State coming here still, too. So uh, Ryan Walters is, has, been sure, has, been, has been sure to acknowledge that the fans still showing up. And, and they're, they're going to show up again. Like I said, Nebraska's Nebraska. It's a brand name, great tradition, great fan base is going to follow it. So it is sold out already, guys. And, uh, you know, high noon kickoff Eastern time for, for people in West Lafayette. And, and uh, they're all just hoping that, that Purdue, you know, maybe doesn't win, but for crying out loud, at least be competitive and keep this game deep into the fourth quarter. Tom, I know one person that's going to get fired this year at Purdue, the guy that made this schedule. <laughs> I, mean, I know. I tell you what, it's, it's crazy. Isn't it? Who the heck put that? So that schedule is just ridiculous. At Ohio State, too. At Ohio State, too. They play the three best teams in the Big Ten. <laughs> you guys only have six home games. I know. That's uh, that's Purdue, man. That's Purdue, Sean. It's 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 crazy. It's been like this for generations. Uh, yeah, I, we don't understand. And Ryan Walters, I know I know. if you asked him, if, he, if you gave him true serum, he doesn't like it. What coach would yeah. like? It's pretty hard. I mean, that's why what Brom accomplished there, you really have to tip your Brom. Brom had it figured out at Purdue. Mm -hmm. He had just, he had his problems. You know, and no, no coach is perfect, but I think Jeff on most Saturdays was the smartest coach on the field. Yeah, uh, a great offensive mind, no nonsense. He's not going to suffer fools. He's not going to hug you and tell you he loves you. He wants you to go out and perform, as I say. You know, don't tell me about the labor. Just show me the baby. And uh, he was he was tough, man. He's a tough guy, too. And again, I, know, I know, you know, he had everybody's got people. You know, not everybody's going to like you. And I, I eventually got a long roll with Jeff Brom, respected him. And and a lot of it's funny. It's funny how things happen on the message boards. Now everybody's so, so nostalgic for Jeff Brom already again. When, you know, when he was here, they're all ripping something about him. Now, every, everything in the past is always great. You, you, you know how that goes, guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at Purdue. You look at them, Tom. The last three seasons have been good, right? Well, you know, the two, the 2022 season was the year they went to the Big Ten title game. Right. And in 21, they beat Tennessee in the uh, Music City Bowl. It was a fun, wild game with Aiden O'Connell. But last year was 4-8. and eight. Okay, last year they struggled. Yeah, no, they, they, I'll tell you one thing that they struggled with is that they, they can't contain the quarterback run. Now, you guys think your backup quarterback is going to play at all? Um, that's the run. I think it's a safe assumption. We'll see Heinrich Harburg in this game. I think it's a safe assumption, whatever that package consists of. Is it three plays? Is it 10 plays? Yeah, that's the question. That, yeah. That's how, how, how deep do they carry that package is probably the question. I'd use them because Purdue has really struggled. They, they still haven't proven even going back to the Syracuse game last year, Garrett Schrader and they make Garrett Schrader look like, you know, a real dated F reference here for you guys. Vince Evans, Vince <laughs> Evans. <laughs> But again, Oregon State came out and showed a new wrinkle. They had an option, guys, and Purdue was just totally clueless. Couldn't stop the option. You get to the edge, it'll be two Oregon State guys and one Purdue guy. It, it, it was again. I don't know. I've said enough, and um, it's I, fans have seen enough, and they want adjustments made, and they want it's called coaching. It's called coaching. Mm -hmm. it's called coaching. <laughs> Figuring out how to make things work. Figuring out how to make things stop. Try to find, hey, how about trying to find a couple mismatches on offense for yourself, too, right? And I, we just didn't seem like we've seen a lot of that. Well, you'll be dealing with Matt Painter soon enough, okay? Well, hey, people, <laughs> they just started practice this week, guys. And a lot of people have already turned the page to basketball, and it's only September 26th. <laughs> well, Tom, we appreciate uh, the time. We'll see you at the game on Saturday. We're staying at Indy, so we won't see you Friday night. Um, home, homecoming took up all the rooms in your town. Um, hey, real quick, Sip. There's a Walmart real close to campus if you need it too, buddy. <laughs> yeah, if he forgets his underwear or his <laughs> jeans or something, we might have to stop out there and get some new clothes for Sipple. Maybe I, even I, a notebook. Maybe even a notebook. I can drive him out there. We can get a cart and get a whole new wardrobe for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tom. All right. Uh, we'll Thanks. see you in the press box. I'll buy lunch. Yeah, fellas.